Chambers of the Occult may contain content that might not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back. Hi. Welcome back. <laughs> Old news nonsense. Old news nonsense. I don't remember oh, oh, oh. who said that for the oh. first time. <laughs> I think oh, it was. I forgot, to... I forgot to open my sangria, you guys. Oh my god! From uh... last episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same yeah, the bottle. Same... <laughs> Never drink <laughs> it. <laughs> you just refilled it. Yeah, I will. Um, what do you wait? What do you mean? I don't know who first said what. Um, because I know in a past episode, one of us said old news nonsense. Um, and I just like started saying it since then. Probably Kai. Probably. Probably. Probably me. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I don't know. I like the way that like. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Old news nonsense. Yeah. Welcome back, Volume Nine. Yeah, I'm Jay. Um, I'm, I'm Alexis. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm. I always go last. I'm Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> we never planned that no um, as you can see most professional anyway. podcast ever that, that was, that's my line um i stole it so <laughs> <laughs> well do you want to steal the show right now and take and it away first? yeah actually um cool so what do you let have the for listeners us? hear what they want to hear who they want to hear sorry you know i'm gonna ask you a question um yeah. when when are you taking us to? When? Yeah. Where? I'm, when? Where? Why, now? why? Who? What? Is that and the name? Exactly how? You, no. <laughs> that was, yeah, that, that was the name of the clipping. <laughs> I'm gonna do the like the one that I thought was kind of cute for this season. Sure. Um, but I don't know how to read poems. So, oh, land poetry, just yeah. Go. So, like, mm. typically, you like look at the word and then you, yeah, it. Then, um, <laughs> I do look at the words. Gotta, you gotta make I sure that you enunciate, uh huh. Yeah. Yep, yeah, it doesn't help me. Do you but, want okay. like, some like symbols in the background or like you know, I don't know, some coffee shop? Can music? I get a beat? <laughs> uh, boots and cats, and boots and cats. And- <laughs> Yeah. Boots and cats and boots and cats yeah. and cats and boots. Okay. Cut the beat. Cut the beat. Cut the beat. Oh, was it? Sh- was it that bad? Yeah, <laughs> it was awful. Oh. I'm gonna send you guys the, the the clipping just in case you guys can read wanna it better than I along. can, and like wanna yeah that too. Okay. Um, this is this was published by the Echo, in. Emporia, Kansas, on Thursday, October 30th, 1924. Mm, okay. Wow. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> October 30th. <laughs> wow. 1924. Cool year. Wow. So crazy. Anyways, so <laughs> it's a spooky Halloween poem cute okay yeah so it started <laughs> again i don't know how to read poems i'm gonna try my hardest uh, if you guys want to correct me along the way you're welcome to when you see okay. a comma take a pause when you see a period I, take a longer pause yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so helpful thank you so much I feel like i'm back in elementary school but all anyways. right so say it along with me a B C, C D, D E F G B. Right, are you warmed up? Cool. Yeah. Take it away. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so it's called Spooky Halloween. And it goes a little something like this. <laughs> Listen to the moaning and the groaning in the night. 
goblins are howling and prowling. Such a sight. <laughs> Eyes and mouths agaping, sending out a fiery light. Was there ever such a scary scene? Was there ever such a scary scene? Listen to the sighing and the crying of the breeze. Listen to the squeaking and the creaking of the trees. Dancing gnomes a-racing o'er the valleys and the leaves. Coming on for spooky Halloween. Coming on for spooky Halloween. Better keep abiding and a-hiding till it's over. Better keep a-looking and a-bloking of the door. Better mind your mother as you never did before. Goblins oh. will know it if you're mean. Goblins will know it if you're mean. Maybe they will nab you <laughs> or they'll grab you like a shot. Maybe they will take you and they'll shake you like as not. Wouldn't that be awful for to happen to a lot? That was Hot. naughty. Uh, what? Oh, to a tot. <laughs> <laughs> That was naughty on a spooky Halloween. That was naughty on a spooky Halloween by Griff Crawford. Nice. Oh. <clears throat> Beautiful performance. Thank snaps, you very snaps much. Snaps all around. Snap, 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 snap. Um, <laughs> I don't know. If you probably can't hear my snap. Up. I was I able hear to yours. hear them. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear Jay's too, I think. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I love the, the, like, the the spelling or whatever of like goblins yeah yeah goblins yeah <laughs> i think that was cool it's cute it's also, a cute and it turns into like the art on it go ahead jay i was gonna say also you read it like a poem so you're good okay yeah, you're good i love that it turns into like a cautionary tale for like children it does it's like don't yep. be bad or else the goblins are gonna kill Get you ya. oh shoot you're right yeah, yeah. It's not only Santa Claus you got Santa Claus you gotta worry about now. Santa Claus. The, uh, he he knows <laughs> when you're sleeping. Okay, that's a poem for December. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard the like the like there's like German like bedtime poems and stuff that are literally yeah. are like like act like Jack the Ripper is gonna kill you if you don't yeah, like wait away. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or like, or other people. And I was like, that's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> that is I mean, Germans are brutal. All the grim fairy tales come, I mean, a lot of them come from Germany. Yeah. I think, <laughs> that's so true. So, I think it's funny how like adults are like, I'm going to make sure these kids listen. I'm going to scare the crap out of them. Fear. Yeah. I'm going to make them th just not be able to sleep at night. And be traumatized. It's one of it's one of those like villain lines that says like I love it. Fear is power, like type of thing. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It's like I have control <laughs> over my own children. Cool. So mine is not Halloween related, but you like, suck. but like. But like, but like, ghost is in the title. So like, okay, I, I all right, close enough. Um. Anyway, this is from the Daily News from Lebanon, Pennsylvania, on Monday, May 9th, nineteen seventy-seven. <clears throat> Good year. Hex continues as ghost ship goes under in wrong place. <laughs> Okay. Oh, so so there's an upper caption of it and it says there she goes. <laughs> Cheers and applause accompanied the launching of the Ghost Ship Quest when it was launched at the Millardsville Quarry Sunday following numerous delays. It was b to have been guided to the center of the quarry and sunk there to be used in the instruction of scuba divers. Mm -hmm. So it was supposed to be sunk. It was going to be a little training uh, type of thing for the scuba divers. Oh, <clears throat> oh okay. But the, the lower caption then says, The quest, a ghost ship resurrected from a water grave in a New Jersey bay, seems to have been haunted by unfriendly spirits ever since plans to transport the vessel to the Millardsville Quarry from Philadelphia were formulated. The final hex occurred Sunday. The final hex. <laughs> the final yeah, hex. Weird, weird. When was the first one? Um, we don't talk about that one. Okay, got it. 
The old trawler was launched early in the afternoon following days of preparation to make sure it floated long enough so workers could attach the mast and guide the ship into the middle of the quarry, there to be sunk to be used in the instruction of scuba divers. Although the boat stayed afloat for about five minutes, uh, the applause and cheers that accompany the launching soon turned into moans and gasps. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong place. The ship went down in about 20 feet of water, only a few feet away from the shore. (laughs) Water poured into its hole faster than the one portable pump aboard could spill it overboard. First, the bow slipped out of sight, and the rest of the ship was surrounded by bubbling, gurgling water as the stern silently settled underwater. Only the pilot house remained above water, tilted starboard toward the center of the quarry, revealing how the boat had settled on the slope from the shore. The trawler sank so quickly that one man aboard the boat was unable to abandon ship before it settled on the bottom. What? He was in no danger, though, (laughs) and remained above water, (laughs) sitting on the port side rail of the ship. He walked to shore on a plank supported by the ship's rail and the shore. He had boarded the boat after launching to see how well the exterior work was functioning. After the boat finally settled, scuba divers attached cables of the crane onto the boat to secure it. And then it moves over to uh, a picture of the sunken boat with a caption that says, All that remains. The ship stayed afloat for only about five minutes and sank in about 20 feet of water, only a few feet from shore. Um, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So and, it did what was meant to happen, just not at the right location? Just way too soon. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> 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 and I, I wonder if they just like left it there. I feel like they did. Like they, they probably wouldn't have been able to move it I, once yeah, again. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, overachiever for the boat, I would say. No, seriously. Yeah, what are we? You know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else to the clipping? But no, that that's it. Okay, that's the clipping. Nice. The ghost ship carrying out its last hex. <laughs> the last <laughs> hex find it interesting that's cool though yeah yeah because logically to train you know some things you have to sink ships i don't think Mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. like train them i I mean it makes sense like i've never actually thought about it but i feel like that makes perfect sense with like scuba diving instruction and stuff to have just like an already sunk ship yeah a ghost ship you just sink it yeah for training like i don't know that makes sense it, it does make sense i think it, it's yeah. a lot safer than actually having to go out and go into like one out in the ocean or somewhere else figure True. it out on the spot yeah this is like not related at all but like i'm still making the connection in my head of how like <laughs> like back like in the day like the navy they would go out to like the far hawaiian islands uh-huh. and they would literally just use like pieces of like the the abandoned islands as just target practice that for like their true. their missiles so and true. their torpedoes and stuff it wasn't smart because it was doing irreparable damage to the yeah. hawaiian islands as yeah. well as all the wildlife there yeah. and I like was, i was being sarcastic oh, okay <laughs> show. sorry my fault, my fault, my fault. No, you're good. um no and i know like like they they stopped it eventually but like I don't know. It was like some years later, but there are people who still found just like an intact like bomb. Yeah, just in the water, and like you never yeah, know if those things are like crazy. live or not. Yes, and so like, they you... had to alert the navy, and they had to go back in and like dispose of it. And I don't know. It's crazy. Do you guys watch oh. those videos on like YouTube of the of that of that one dude that puts a magnet in like the water, the lake, the ocean whatever and oh, he like, like magnet fishing pull, yeah yeah magnet fishing yes. yeah and he and he like will find like a bomb or something and he'll call the police the police must hate that guy because he calls them like <laughs> almost every day is what it seems I, like i feel like half of them like it because they like finding what he finds and the other half are just like dude like this shit is so stupid yeah like, like just like doing? just okay, leave it whatever. down there like what are- you found a bunch of like license plates and he was like, whoa, these might be connected to, like, a murder or something. Yeah. So he collected them all. <laughs> and he called the police. And the guy was just like, we can't do anything with this. Yeah, the police literally can't do anything. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, <laughs> I mean, it's registered to the car. And the name. Of the, well, but, yeah, I don't but know. Also, or, like, yeah. sometimes their serial numbers exactly. will be, like, eroded away. Yeah. Or, like, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Damn. 
Anyway, where to next, Jay? Um, well, Alexis covered a spooky Halloween poem. You covered a hallow no, not not Halloween, a haunted ship. A ghost ship. A yeah. ghost mm-hmm. ship. Yeah. Um, I'm covering I am doing a follow up on a witch. Okay. Do you remember that? Oh, okay. Witch that beat up little kids? Um, from last. What episode. volume was that on? Um, oh, last old news nonsense. Remember if it was. Let's see. <laughs> um, I don't remember anything, Jay. You know this. Fair, fair. Um, all I remember is like the hippo love story. <laughs> yeah, that's the most important fair. One. No, it was not the last one because last one I just covered full hippos. It might have been the one before that. Okay. I was gonna say I don't remember you bringing up which. Oh yeah, 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 which woman? Yeah, yes. which okay. cr- woman? Crazy lady. Yeah, was that volume seven? Was I was seven. I on that seven, episode? Seven. You were. I was. You oh, okay? Yeah, I totally know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's when you talked about the the corn queen. <gasps> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Which okay, kind of, I'm gonna title have to for. look at the. <laughs> 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 okay, so. This is from the Decatur Daily, Decatur, Alabama, oh. <laughs> from Saturday, July 14th, 1934. This is just where it's been reported. It actually took place in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so okay. I remember. The title now. says, there, uh, there's a lot of pictures. I'll send you the clipping ones. I rate you the clipping. But it says, eight year, eight year trial of the phantom witch woman who beat little children. So it says, "This is so crazy." The fact that it went on for so long, it's just mind-boggling. It says, "Also, uh, it's written in a very funky way. Um, some parts make sense, some other parts, it seems like a middle schooler put big words in there trying to make it make sense. So just bear with me." <laughs> Ogie dogie. It says, "Fear." pervaded a whole city and detectives ran down countless clues as 16 kitties became the victims of fiendish attacks no though Why? one little then one little boy's finger pointed to a mother of six you've got to be kidding me ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Uh, so funny, huh? Uh. Stop. <laughs> and then it goes to a section that says the finger of the guilt. And it says the well-known admonition, admonition, is that the word? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Of non of non-thinking parents to their caprich capricious. Capricious? <laughs> yeah, see, I'm already so. capricious. Capricious child. You better be a good, you better be good, or the witch woman will get you. Has been no more idle thread in Los Angeles for the last eight years. For this, this quieting the facts was lately revealed that there was, that there has been a real in person witch woman prowling the streets okay. of the California metropolis ever since 1926. No less than 16 tiny children had been victims of her <laughs> fiendish and cruelty. Oh my gosh. Con- that is insane. Yeah. Oh, so many oh, kids. Just wait till we get to this because I like shook my head stepping away from my computer at one point. Okay. So it says uh, conditions of this kind as a rule are jealousy guarded by the authorities of large cities. For that reason... There were a few outside of Los Angeles who knew of the witch's depredations. A woman, mother of six, was arrested and convicted on the attacks, with accusations resting almost solely upon identification by the children who were victims. The assaults reported Mm. again and again from many different sections of Los Angeles seldom varied in their details. A horrid-looking woman lured little boys and girls to open fields or porches of unoccupied houses. Usually, the pretext was the story that the child's mother had been horribly horribly mangled in an accident. Then, yeah. 
then suddenly this the, sucks. It does. Th- this children are like, oh my god, your mom got hurt. Come with me. And of course, the little kids are going to be like, oh no, what happened? Like, yeah, like let's help. Um, I just wait till you hear what she told one of the kids. But it continues by saying, okay. then suddenly the woman would fly into a rage. Rain bl- uh, blows on her tiny victims, uh, punctuated with her uncanny hisses and snarls. After plummeting the children severely, she u- she usually was frightened away, ab- abandoning her victims to extensive medical ministrations in the city's hospitals. Fortunately, none of the children were fatally injured by her wicked beatings. Some God. of the witch's earlier victims have now grown into young men and womanhood, but even over the years, the scarlet etch memories of their wild experiences stand out in their minds. The last assault was reported only recently. Little six-year-old Arthur Miller was sauntering home from school when he was accosted. He said by a woman speaking excitedly, she, to- she told, Your mother is dead. Her head was cut off in an auto accident. Oh, I will what? take care of you. Yes. <laughs> it's nothing simple. What? It's like, like she is making up ridiculous lies. I, that's when I had to oh like my. take a pause. I'm like, did she really what yell this at kids? Yeah. Yeah. And it continues by saying, this was not a ter- not as terrifying as it might have been to young Arthur. He remembered well that his mother had, quote unquote, gone away for a long time, some months before. He remembered mm-hmm. too that his father had talked kindly to him then and explained, Mama has died and gone to heaven. Oh my gosh. So his mom was already dead. He knew that. She had already passed away. His dad told her, told him. So Arthur was wasn't like completely taken back by what the lady said but at the same time you can only imagine what she was yelling at the other 15 victims yeah no that's like just running in saying like your mom like got decapitated and died and now i'm the one that's taking care of you and it continues by saying but arthur's curiosity was aroused Even though he had been warned by his father never to go near with strange people, he willingly accompanied this woman. She led him several blocks until they came to the home of Mr. and Mrs. W.L. Donaldson, who by chance happened to be downtown at that minute. The woman led Arthur to the front door, even pretend that she was going to enter. Then suddenly, according to the story, the boy sobbed, to the police, the woman struck out at him. Sparks of hatred leaped from her eyes. Arthur was paralyzed with surprise and terror. He could not run. She hurled him to the floor. Then the witch began swinging her vicious fe- fists. Once, twice, three times she struck Arthur about the face. Um, gained to swell, pale blotches, where the um, forerunners of black and blue appeared. Babbling incon- incoherently and with frenzied actions, the woman ripped a strip from a porch hammock. Uh, the powerful hands, which had so horribly burst the children, seemed to possess inhuman mm. strength. She slashed oh, at shit. him with the canvas bands, opening white cuts in his face and legs. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, and oh, it continues by gosh. saying, Arthur might have been killed, the doctor said had the Donaldsons not returned at that very moment. Oh, the witch God. heard the car stop in the alley in the rear of the house. One final slash at a nearly unco- unconscious youngster. Then she leaped from the porch and hurried down the street. When a few, within a few minutes, physicians had arrived. A large crowd had gathered around the porch railing. Arthur was revived, assisted to his feet, And then, there she is. There she is, he screamed. That's the woman who hurt me. So, turns out that this witch woman beat the child up and then came back to pretend to be a concerned citizen. Dude, what the fuck? Yes! (laughs) 
it continues. By she really is a witch. She really oh is. My gosh, and she's a she mother is. of six. And here she is bidding up random children in the streets. Yeah. What the hell? So it continues by saying his tiny shaking hand pointed to the fat middle aged looking woman standing call me amid the curious at the porch edge. Detectives promptly arrested her. She gave her ma- name as Miss Betty Coquet, Coquelis, 34. She, ha- she was the wife of a fruit vendor and the mother of six children. But um, indignantly shouted her innocence. But she was taken to the police station for questioning and finally was charged with nine different assaults on children. The Donaldsons, who had seen the fleeting fiend when they returned to find Arthur on the porch, also pointed to the witch woman as the culprit. Then Jackie Fosterling, seven years old, and Virginia Will Hoyt, um, (laughs) I was like, what is this name? (laughs) Um, Also seven-year-olds declared that she was the witch who had attacked them um, under almost identical circumstances. Mr. and Mrs. F. W. Martin, uh, occupants of the house where little Virginia had been beaten, stepped forward to accuse Miss Cochleus of being the woman they had frightened away from Virginia on that dreadful afternoon. The Martins, like the Donaldsons, had not been at the home when the woman and her prey reached the house. On this occasion, the witch took Virginia into the rear yard where she was... Um, screened for screened yeah where she was screened from praying eyes by rows of foliage and trees Virginia's description of the assault was much like Arthur's the girl said that the woman growled like a bear um, throughout the attack and that she used a twig torn from a tree to whip her the witch oh my god the, i know <laughs> this the witch in this case also fled when she heard that martin's approach their home miss cochleus excitedly denied every identification she pleaded that she could establish alibis for her for her presence on each occasion the climax to climax her defense she reminded detectives that her own little daughter betty had been one of the witch woman victims why she sobbed if there were uh if she were the fiend would she attack her own child and would not little betty recognize her mother and tell if she had detectives could not could not and never did explain this the accused mother was held for trial the the nine counts against her charged child stealing felonies assault and moral violations Upon the day of her trial, Miss Cochleus dropped a bombshell in the packed courtroom. After repeated denials, she pleaded not guilty because of insanity. The hearing con- of course she did. Yeah. The hearing continued with many sentinel scenes, and finally she was found legally uh, legally of sound mind and guilty of all nine counts. As this was written, she was awaiting sentence, which under California under the California anti-kidnapping law, could be death. From the psychiatrist, uh, it was learned that her compiled case his compiled case histories show quite the number of men and women alike who have been driven to inflict torturous punishments on the weak children, but they cannot explain why, other than this type of cruelty, is a breach of the particular sadistic impulses which flare in s- some people. Which women, fortunately, have usually been characterized of fancy rather than fact in this country. No further attacks have been reported in Los Angeles since Miss Cochleus captures. Since Miss Cochleus capture. Good. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I know it was Dude, a long that... clipping. No, no, no. But that no. was good. Like that was so much more than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. It That's was. Insane. It is. I'm just like reading through this and I'm like, okay, like this woman, you know, could have been at like burn at the stake <laughs> if she was alive <laughs> during like the, yeah, what do we? the, the Salem, Salem witch trials. They're like, yeah. which woman burn her. 
Um, but yeah, <laughs> so the her. reason I brought this up is because the, on episode volume seven that we covered, we had a comment that they wanted to know more about the witch woman. So I did some research and I found it out. So that's cool. I hope you're satisfied, people. Because yeah. honestly, I'm satisfied. That was good. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a dark story for alt news nonsense, but it's a yeah. follow up to, you know, an interesting one. Yeah. But yeah, that's cool. Um, Alexis Sick. here to take it. Oh, and I'll send you the clipping right now as well. So you can take a look because there's multiple pictures of her, the children. Um, and for some reason, they have like different pictures of her. They're like, this is her side profile. This is her front view. But um, I'll send Damn. it your way. Meanwhile, Alexis, okay. go ahead. Take it away. Twag. Okay. Um, I'm going to send you guys the clipping too. <sighs> Just because I feel like it. But um, <laughs> this was published in Burlington, Vermont by okay. the Burlington Free Press on Thursday, April 8th, 1993. <laughs> um, and it starts off by saying... No place like home for winged monkey. South Burlington. The winged monkey has returned to the Emerald <laughs> City. Okay. <laughs> the iron monkey sculpture taken in October from the roof of the Emerald City bedroom shop now sits by the store's counter, said Rick Carlson, owner of the furniture store. South Burlington police said the monkey was recovered last week after they acted on a Crime Stoppers tip. Detective Paul Cassell said two people will be cited for possession of stolen property. <laughs> the monkey's recovery means that Emerald City soon will have three sculptures. Carlson said a replacement for the stolen monkey is due to arrive any day. When it does, it will join the recovered sculpture inside the store, he said, from staff reports. Somebody stole oh, yeah. a winged monkey freaking statue. As sculpture? far as like things to steal, I think that is a very cool. Yeah, I would do that. I wanted to steal the skull in the lattice room from Last Unhinged. <laughs> no. I wanted to steal it so bad. Things go missing a lot everywhere. But a monkey statue, was, I would understand. A flying monkey statue at that. We love flying There's monkeys. One thing you guys could take from the house, what would it be? From the house? Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. You, oh, my God, guys. We're dropping more breadcrumbs. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god. god. Do um, we have like for, me, for the listeners out there. Oh, wow. It would have to be I'm not going to lie. I just want that like grandfather clock in the guest reception hall. Bro, you can <laughs> That's so get cool. that from anywhere though. Huh? From eBay. Yeah, for 13,000 pounds. <laughs> oh. Oh, do you have that? No, I I took a picture of it and then put it on like Google reverse image search and that's on uh -huh. eBay for 13,000 pounds. Damn. Okay. okay. That's why when Kai, Kai was like, if you could take anything, I'm like, I'm taking 13,000 pounds <laughs> of a grandfather clock. <laughs> what about Valid. you? Valid. Um, I... This might be a basic answer. I don't know. But... Uh. I <laughs> Lynn Crest, uh... no 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 in the twin dining rooms they're like when you're met with it there's a stained glass window in the ceiling ah I would just take that one oh okay. that one's beautiful so you're going really into like, like things built into the place I was yes. just thinking for well that's wise. I was just thinking from the house so fair okay <laughs> what about you what about Patrick? you um, the Winchester Park guest book. <laughs> no. Ah. No. Oh, actually valid. <laughs> okay. And the, and, and, uh, and Marion's green dress. You can't take two. 
You yes, only I choose can. one. Um, listen, Alexis. No, no, no. I need something he to has, wrap the book. He no, has, I. He has two hands. You, you need two I need hands to, to carry that window. You need two hands to carry that window. I need two hands to carry the grandfather clock. He can carry one that on each hand. That window is so small. <laughs> but you got to be careful with it. It's one no, of a kind. No, no, no. I need something I just, to wrap the window. Actually, then. you know what? I wouldn't steal the book. I think I would just open it up and try to find cool names in it. Oh. <laughs> and then I put it back. Valid. Okay. Would you take pictures of them? Yeah. Okay. You have Smart. to. And then I'd tear out what? one of the pages so that like oh. people looking at it are like, oh my God, what happened to the page? Oh no. They're like <laughs> somebody's name was in here and there's like a whole like. And like, then you're going to be it, giggling in the corner. Yeah, it's gonna start conspiracy theories of like who visited. It's like, was it the celebrity? <laughs> was it like this president? Was it like this famous? I don't know person. Yeah, yeah, what I do think we? that'd be fun. Yeah, what do we? Turns out he just rips out an empty page, <laughs> but no one knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I do know is that I have another story for you guys. Yes. Oh my god. <clears throat> so glad you knew that the kansas city times kansas city missouri friday september 3rd 1971 honey spills traffic sticky okay <laughs> i like this already <laughs> bar for bar for i bar love bar. the title of this one yeah i i knew this was going to be a story before i i even read it i was like the title i was like that's it that's yes one. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one. A section of US 71 bypass in Liberty was turned into a sticky strip of road last night when six barrels of refined honey from a passing truck tumbled to the highway. <laughs> Liberty police said the honey spilled from the 55 gallon drums covered both southbound lanes of the four lane highway south of I 35 and cutting off traffic for about 75 minutes. Whoa. Cases of honey jars were also shattered by the impact. No that's a way. lot of honey <laughs> i am picturing this and yeah. i don't know how they cleaned it up but oh no man way. um uh, oh. wow fire department pretty much yeah i'll get it did they so spray it, it down it. did they just like <laughs> yeah. spray it to the side I, I guess so so it says no accidents or injuries resulted from the accident police said Trucks from the Liberty Fire Department were dispatched to the scene to wash the pavement clean. Oh. <laughs> but the State Highway Department had to be called in to throw sand over the block-long sticky spill. That makes sense. So it was just kind of covered up. <laughs> wow. Traffic was rerouted to M152 and then I-35 while firemen and highway crews labored to return the pavement to passable condition. 40 gallons remained in one barrel which uh, Van Erdstahl said would be recovered today. Police said the hitch on a trailer carrying the barrel snapped, but a safety chain attached to the two-ton southbound truck held, causing the trailer to swing back and forth. The truck, owned by the Osage, Osage, O-S-A-G-E Honey Farm Osage. at Sibley, Osage yeah, Honey Farm at Sibley in eastern Jackson County, was loaded with cases of honey in combs. George Vennersdahl, Vennersdahl, owner of the farm, said the load did not fall off the truck. The spill was confirmed to the contents of the 8 by 12 foot trailer, which was loaded with honey and eight cases of empty honey jars. There were 12 jars in each case, Vennersdahl said. He said the honey was being taken from a processing plant in Nebraska to the farm. He refused to give an estimate of the loss, but agreed with $800, a, quote, ballpark, end quote, figure reported by okay. the police. <laughs> So about eight hundred dollars worth of honey in nineteen seventy one. Could when do you guys look up the conversion for that? Nineteen seventy one, eight hundred dollars. But anyway, Sergeant Larry Lewis, shift supervisor who took charge of the scene, said the pavement was passable by eleven p.m. "Quote: There will be a lot of bees there in the morning. In fact, they've already started to come in." He oh, said. <laughs> a sight to behold. True. Dude, okay, eight hundred dollars in 1971 is worth six thousand two hundred eighteen dollars and nineteen cents. That's a lot. So around six thousand dollars worth of honey was lost. Oh my <laughs> That's God. wild. That's so much. I honestly feel bad for that worker. 
right? Like, how do you, like, you pull over and you just step out of your truck and you're, like, hands on your head. You're just like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm, the- I'm, <laughs> I'm curious yeah, if they have, like, the is there such a thing as, like, honey insurance? Or, like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like, how how does the business recover this loss? I, I, don't, I don't know if they do, honestly. Yeah. I also imagine that this man either got re- just reprimanded a write up or just lost his job entirely. I mean, it would really suck if he lost his job. Yeah. But, but it probably did. I, don't know. End up I wouldn't be surprised. Mm, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Wow. Poor dude. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you on. very much. Um, funnily enough, you're talking about things going wrong while driving. Um, <laughs> I'm not necessarily saying that something went wrong in this story. Um, But for this story, this is from the Daily Mirror from London, uh, in London, England. So we're going overseas. And this is from August 11th, 1958. And the headline just says, they swapped their baby for Lori. Huh? Yeah. Now, a Lori is a truck. Oh, a Lori. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. I was like, who's Lori? Yeah, I, that's what I thought uh, at first. And then I was like, what? Um, a Lori is a truck, yeah. So it says, a young Got couple it, uh, swapped their 20-week-old son for a Lori, police alleged today. The couple, Richard Reddy, 26, and his wife, Hel- Helen, 20, were hitchhiking their way from Pennsylvania to Cal- California. They... Hello? Thumbed a lift from Jesse Berger, 42, as he was driving his lorry. I was just thinking about the how long hitchhiking from Pennsylvania to California. Oh, yeah. that would be crazy, dude. Wait, hold on. Let me look yeah. that up. With a... With a baby. A 20-week-old week, 20 week baby. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why? What were they doing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Where were they? Yeah, they were going to California. Anyway, they... Why? They got picked up by this guy in a lorry. Yeah. As he was driving his lorry through uh, Joplin, Missouri, uh, Reddy is alleged to have admitted to the police that during the ride, he said to the burger, to the man, um, I'll trade the you. Burger. That's his last name. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I think it's funny. I'll trade you the boy for the truck. Uh- <laughs> it's a deal, replied Burger. No way. <laughs> <laughs> So that easy not even me. like not even like asking the wife it's just like oh my god uh the two men made out a bill of sale for the lorry to make the deal <laughs> quote unquote, that is legal. insane i almost thought you were just gonna finish after made out <laughs> 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 no it says uh burger was on his way to visit his sister at tulsa oklahoma when he arrived there, he told his sister about the deal, and she told the police. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Reddy uh, and Berger were arrested. The couple will appear in court tomorrow, Good. charged with abandoning their baby, Paul Andrew. Reddy told police that he had only 14 seconds left, and that he, he and his wife were afraid that they would never reach California. 14s? 14 seconds? That's told police that they had only 14 left. Anyway, um, <laughs> that said, uh, uh, that he gave, well, what am I reading now? Okay. That he said gave him the idea of swapping Paul, their only child. We figure out we would be better off without the baby, Reddy said. Oh. Berger and his wife, Barbara, have a seven-year-old daughter. Paul has been placed in a juvenile home. And that is all. So, I guess it's good they recognize they couldn't really take care of the kid. But like, I, in a way. Yeah. But just being like, I'll trade my kid for your truck, for your lawyer. I mean, I would do the like, same. I also feel like, um, I don't know what the man was thinking when he said, it's a deal. Burger? Yeah, like, did he not question it at all? Or like, I mean, maybe he was like, oh, like, you know, like I can give this kid a better life because these people aren't like good enough. So. Yeah. Or maybe like yeah. if I don't take the Something. kid, they can abandon him somewhere else. So, yeah, yeah I see. I That's see. crazy. But yeah. So, Alexis. 
I tried looking up right. how long it takes to hike to Pennsylvania from here, but it, it, it won't even let me press the walking option. Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> of course. So, like, driving is 40 hours. Yeah, and these people are hitchhiking with a baby. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Well, Alexis, Oh, okay, anyways, it's me. Um, yes. Did one, did one kind of long. This one kind of long, so I'm going to send it to you guys before I share it because I want to... Do you guys want me to share, read the whole thing? Yeah, read the whole thing. Our our listeners are here for you to read it. Swag, 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 swag. They want to hear your your sexy voice. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you, listeners. I'll sign your autographs later. Send her a coffee. Yes, I'm, what? No, <laughs> don't send me a coffee. I don't like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> don't send me anything. <laughs> Wait. Okay, anyways. Um, so this one was published by The News Messenger in Fremont, Ohio. On Saturday, July 30th, 1988. And the headline is Flying Pig Sculpture Gives Birth to Pig Mania. <laughs> okay yeah all right it was so the birth st- of an addict of an addiction or collection whatever you want to call wait. it i'm gonna go to pig mania anyways cincinnati's passion for pigs and all things has a, <laughs> i don't know how to say that word how do i say that word i'm gonna google it what word poor sign is that how it is what Bella. Porcine. 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 Okay. 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 Cincinnati's passion for pigs and all things porcine has achieved its own status as a phenomenon. It has been dubbed pig mania. Pig adorned sweatshirts, t shirts, and pencils are selling like proverbial hotcakes. Model pigs of almost any material, porcelain, pewter, hand-painted wood, and paper mache are selling briskly at the city's gift and novelty stores. The interest has prompted squeals of delight from retailers. Quote, one of our biggest sellers has been a sweatshirt that says, who gives an oink? End quote. (laughs) That's really cute. I like that. (laughs) It is cute. Said Judy Rethven who operates a gift shop for Cincinnati Historical Society. Quote, Every city should be so lucky as to have a little bit of levity like this. End quote. It began last winter when some residents and leaders of this Ohio River city of 385,000 got upset that the city's bicentennial sculpture would include a set of bronze flying pigs. Sculptor Andrew Leicester, oh, I'm just gonna go with that, said the pigs were just part of a salute to Cincinnati's 200 year history and were intended to commemorate the city's Porcopolis days in the late 19th century when it was a hog butchering capital. A hog butchering cat. God. Yeah. But the issue became a sizzler that went all the way to City Hall and attracted international attention before city officials decided that the 180 pound winged pigs should be included in the $600,000 sculpture, which was commissioned for Cincinnati's 200th birthday and er, celebration. Pig mania has been alive and well ever since. Even while city council members, some of whom donned plastic snouts and pig hats, were listening to the debate in February, a radio station had a woman carry a pig into the council chambers. Carry yeah, like I just showed like up a, with a pig. Like a pig. It's it bring your pet to work right, in in. right into the council chamber. <laughs> oink, oink. <laughs> <laughs> Who gives an oink you for me? Um, 
crow pig forces um, carried signs to get across their message. Pig mania hasn't oh. eased in intensity. Mrs. Rathven said tourists, including those from other countries, often make a beeline in the Historical Society's downtown gift shop for some of the more than 50 varieties of toy or model pigs on sale. She recalled that one visitor bought more than $600 worth of pig items. Oh, no. No way. This was in 1988. 56 or 88. I can only imagine that this was a Taurus. They come back and they're like, America is all about pigs. I need one of you to convert $600 in 1988 to today. 600 even. Um, But then it goes on to say, quote, there's no stopping this. Only the imagination. Uh, we're in for the long pool, end quote, she said. She expects that p- the pigs will be featured sellers through the Christmas season. Asked okay. why customers are so attracted to the pig items, Mrs. Rethman said, quote, it seems to make them happy. I think it's just the connotation. Here's something f- that's fun. And they are. People look in the shop and they laugh. We have windows full of them, end quote. Her husband, wildlife artist, John Rethman, began months ago making wooden, hand-painted porkers on a stick for sale at the store. The porkers. Rathvins... Yeah! I don't know what that yeah, and looks like, but you can Google it. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Rathvins joined forces for a while to produce a variety of large and small pigs on a stick. Oh, okay, that's what it is. Uh, which they called... Queenies and weenies. We're <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> but, That's but, not bad. <laughs> I guess. Could be worse. Yeah. But although demand was strong, the Rethvins finally quit making them. Quote, we just couldn't do it anymore. We got queenied and weenied out. End quote. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Quote, she was a creator of the pigs and I was the artist, end quote, Rethvin said, chuckling as he recalled his um, involvement. Quote, being a wildlife artist, it kind of authenticated the situation, end quote. The people at the Greater Cincinnati Bicentennial Commission, which is coordinating the year-long celebration of the city's bicentennial, have been amused and perplexed by the public's fascination with the pig sculpture and pig mania. Pig mania. <laughs> quote, it's funny what will capture the imagination of the public, end quote. Commission spokeswoman Mary Lynn Ricks said. Rather than miss the publicity opportunity, the commission distributed foam rubber pig hats, complete with wings at the june 1st dedication of leicester's winged pig sculpture rethvin said the public interest has been an artist's delight quote it's been a bonanza end quote he said quote we really got into the pig thing in a big way the whole city went topsy-turvy over the pig thing end quote (laughs) And that is so fun. I would so want fun. one of those hats with the like winged pig. Yeah, that's so cute. Um, so the six hundred dollars in nineteen eighty is roughly a thousand five hundred ninety five dollars. Damn. So just under just under sixteen hundred. Yeah. That's still a that's a lot. Yeah, they splurge pig for pig Freaking merch. Pig merch. <laughs> I hope they still have it. Maybe it's gone up in value. Yeah, I hope so too. If, oh, I would if, I would love to have that. If a listener <laughs> has any of those, I'll, I'll buy them. If any leads. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be like, my Where grandma has down. a ton of pigs in her house. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Cool. Well, for my last one, it's now going to be a Halloween story. Ooh, okay. Um, I was yeah. waiting. Because, you know, it is October. It is. And uh, I wanted to get something in there. <clears throat> so. Um. Sorry, I just blanked out for a second. No, you're uh, fine. <laughs> um, you were, I don't know. 
Yeah. They're disassociated. No, I started reading the article, but like I was reading it in my head. <laughs> And you're like, oh, that's right. I have to share this with people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The monsters um, in his head. Also, because one of you did a article about Burling or in Burlington, Vermont. I did. Uh, just early, and then what was yours? Mine. That was in Burlington. It was oh, me. For, I, I think yeah. that was Alexis. Which yeah. one? Um, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look. Let me take a look, see Tootsie. It was oh, the flying okay. monkey statue. It was the flying yeah. monkey statue. The winged monkey, yeah. <laughs> well, this, yeah, the yeah. Yes. And I, I think it's I don't know, it, it's really funny that these are both Burlington like Vermont yeah. articles and they're both about are they kid or like I'll get into it. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. This is from uh, Burlington Free Press, uh, Burlington, Vermont, Wednesday, November third, nineteen twenty six. Um, complaints follow uh, Halloween pranks. <laughs> so, uh, residents are flooding the police department with complaints of damage done by lawless boys in their efforts to celebrate Halloween. Harmless pranks were excused on the eve of All Hallows, which was Sunday night. But this year, the pranks were not all harmless, and they began on Friday night and were continued through Monday night. Okay. Uh, one woman had a large iron lawn vase. Uh, side note, what the hell is an iron lawn vase? It's what I was going to yeah, ask you no about. no freaking clue. I'm going to Google it. <laughs> a lawn How vase. do you spell... Is it just, just lawn iron, and lawn vase? vase? Yeah. Okay. Like, is a vase for your plants outside? I, it, yeah, it, I found one on Wayfair. Yeah, yeah I, basically. I found one on Amazon. <laughs> it's really just a vase for your plants, I think. What? That's okay. Uh, Got it. Um, well, anyway, so, this uh, how... she she had her large iron lawn vase costing fifty dollars broken. Um, what? Porches and doors were made targets for rotten tomatoes and apples. The contents of garbage cans were dumped on front doorsteps. Flower pots were upset and broken. Shrubs were uprooted and a considerable amount of property damage done. So, a lot of damage. Uh, were you going to say something earlier, Jay? No, I forgot. I you up. Okay, <laughs> cool. Well, Prospect Street, Loomis Street... Bradley Street and South Union Street were the scenes of the worst depredations, and residents are demanding that something be done to bring the pranks to an end. A number of boys were picked up by the police and taken to police headquarters, but the next night, some more damage was done by boys. Uh, some of the worst offenders were identified, and yesterday it was said that prosecutions were to follow. And that's the story. Nice. What? I don't know. Nothing too crazy, but no, it's like trick or Halloween treat, pranks. But at this point, it's yeah. just like tricks. Yeah, <laughs> we should do Halloween pranks this year. Uh, excuse you. Like what? Where? With like who? damage of property? <laughs> yeah. Let's Could go we... rob a. Let's go rob a federal bank. That's no, so no. funny. How about we just like gnome okay. places? What? How about we just gnome places? Gnome, dude. Places. The gnome. Oh my god, I would love to gnome. Let's do just it. work. What was that one? That one story a long time ago of like the 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 gnome, the GLF, the gnome yeah, liberation gar, front, uh, the garden gnome liberation front, garden gnome, the GGLF. Yes, the GGLF. There we go. <laughs> uh, god, I still remember that. I That's think crazy. that would be fun. I don't um, know if it's true or not. Really fun. But I've heard like re like people say that like you can pay someone to gnome someone's property, but like you do it through like the dark web or something. <laughs> and i'm just like i'm not that tech savvy like i know what i'm doing but i'm not that tech savvy to get in there and then pay people to do that no we'll figure it out we'll figure it out yeah if any of you <laughs> folks no don't don't know place don't know anyone <laughs> yeah don't do that um well i'm taking us to the santa cruz sentinel in 1977 okay and it's actually from philadelphia but it's reported in the santa cruz sentinel it's just it. how newspapers work. I don't know. Um, yeah. I've noticed that with the Santa Cruz Sentinel, they like to take stories from like all over the place. Yeah. Because I've done some Santa Cruz Sentinel things in there, like other areas of the country. But yeah. anyway. No, so yeah, this is a story from uh, actually Philadelphia. And it's the headline reads Rare Snakes Smuggled to U.S. Zoos. 
So it Wait, continues. What? Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's there's the smuggling snakes. How yeah. Could they? It says uh, zoo officials quote were just looking the other way end quote as the international smuggling ring brought more than. 600 rare contrabanded reptiles into the United States, a federal prosecutor says. Quote, I think the mentality <laughs> among the zoos in this country when this investigation started was, if you can get an animal, get it. End quote. U.S. Attorney right. David Mar- uh, Mar- Marston said Thursday after feder- a federal grand jury here indicted 12 persons in a two- and in a two and one year investigation uh, that range from the United States to France, Switzerland, Africa, and Australia. So this snakes are that's coming. a lot. They're coming from everywhere. They are. They really um, are. A lot of places. It says eight of the nation's most prestigious zoos were identified as having received the contraband animals. The zoos are as follows. The National Zoological Park in Washington, D.C., a branch of the Smithsonian Institute, the Philadelphia Philadelphia Zoological Garden, St. Louis Zoological Park, Dallas Zoo, uh-huh. Knoxville, Tennessee Zoo, Sacramento, California Zoo, Se- Seneca Park Moon Zoo in Rochester, New York, and Overton Park Zoo in Memphis. So all these parks, all the zoos have illegal contraband snakes. Illegal in them. smuggled <laughs> snakes. Yes, yeah. that is so sick. Which you honestly never well, think of. Like you're not going like, to there. support it. Seriously, I I wonder if the zoos knew that the snakes were being smuggled. Like they had to have been right because they're like yeah, illegal no, snakes. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, they're like if you can get what? your hands on an animal, get the animal. Do it. Yeah. And like they're like we're a zoo. They're not gonna like arrest us <laughs> as a zoo for uh-huh. this. I don't know. No, it's wild. Like I never go to a zoo and think that animal was contraband. No, that's illegal. Exactly. Yeah. I never think that. <laughs> Is this a jail? <laughs> Are they holding the, <laughs> Ill- the <laughs> illegal immigrants? Oh my god! Among the twelve um, foreign nationals uh, named in the incident was Jonathan Leakey, thirty-seven, son of the late anthropologist Dr. Louis Leakey. And regarded as one of the world's leading snake experts. Leakey, who runs a snake park in Kenya attached to Kenya's National Museum, expressed shock and surprise when told he had been indicted. He said he would have to study the report before making any further comments. Although no zoo officials were named in the indi- indictments, uh, Martson said the U.S. Interior Department would seek civil penalties against the institutions and curators that received rare snakes, lizards, crocodiles, and other cold-blooded animals. Wow. So there was a variety. <laughs> um, wow. Zoo officials denied any com- uh, com- complicity in the alleged smuggling. We did not smuggle any snakes, said Charles... Uh, Deputy Director of the St. Louis Zoo. We bought the animals in good faith. The animals were in the country at the time we negotiated for them. If the animals were contraband, we weren't aware of it. Yeah, where do we? Uh, of course they're going to deny it. <laughs> yeah. No one's going to say, yeah, we knew that we're like contraband sna- you know, snakes and crocodiles and we bought we them. We knew. Um, he declined further comment, saying federal authorities had asked zoo officials not to discuss the case. In Memphis, Tennessee, zoo director Charles Wilson said he believed the two Fiji Fiji iguanas at the zoo were not listed as endangered when they were purchased. To my knowledge, those iguanas were brought here from the Fiji Islands, declared they were endangered, and we believe we were buying them from a reputable dealer, he said. The thing that shocks me is that if they were illegal, then why blame us, he said. We don't import the animals and did not know that they were illegal, if that's no, the case. No, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, Wilson said he had. Wilson said he has not been contacted by the customs officials who conducted the investigation, but Charles Beck, the zoo curator of Aquaria and Reptiles, had testified twice before the grand jury. Ronald T. Ru- 
Ruther, president of the Philadelphia Zoological Garden, said last February uh, when the investigation was announced that, quote, this animals came with permits. We thought they were proper, end quote. (laughs) (laughs) No, they faked their papers. This lizards, you can't oh trust them. Oh my god. No, seriously, they're all they're snakes for <laughs> a reason. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> a custom official said the investigation showed that more than six hundred reptiles were illegally brought into this country. That's crazy. That's yeah. So funny. Uh and how then, do you get into the illegal animal trade? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Um, um, it continues to say about 300 of the reptiles died shortly after being um, oh. clandestinely brought into the U- United States on one Makes expedition sense. in the 1970s, in 1974. Yeah, it, unfortunately, yeah. tragic. Yeah. Um, the official said the resale value of the 300 surviving snakes and other reptiles was estimated at $35,000. What Would anyone care to put that in the... This was 1974. Alexis. Math time. How much? 19, oh, $35,000. $35,000? Yes. Okay, cool. It continues by saying, among the rare species of snakes alleged to have been illegally imported were Australian and New Guinean pythons, poisonous, quote, death adders, and deadly... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, snakes. Other reptiles cited were uh, Johnson's crocodiles, Nile crocodiles, and Fiji I- iguanas. Uh, Martson said that the indictments were the first ever under the Endanger- Endangered Species Act of 1973. He said the penalty for conviction of illegally imported animals is 5000 for each offense. God. Yeah. Jesus Christ. The 12 individuals were charged with violating custom laws federal fish and wildlife laws, and the Lacey Act, which makes it illegal to take wild, wildlife from other nations in violation of their laws. Americans indicted by the grand jury were Henry A. Moult Jr., a reptile dealer for from Will Grove, <laughs> um, Alvin H. Yeah. Weinberg, a Kings Park, New York reptile dealer, Stephen and Levy, dealer. <laughs> I know, a student from Pittsburgh, <laughs> Um, Edward B. Allen Jr., a Delaware uh, County businessman. Um, I'm a businessman. I I deal with (laughs) reptiles. (laughs) Um, David Christian Christensen, an amateur. Ooh, I don't know what this word is. Type it in the chat. H e r p e t o l o g i s t. Wait. Herpetologist? I was going to be uh, like herpetologist. Yeah. Herpetologist from Trenton, New Jersey. And Rudolf, a New Jersey reptile dealer. Foreign nationals indicted were Jonathan Leakey of Kenya, Africa, um, and Christopher Wee, both described as Signa- both described as Singapore animal dealers. Maurice Von Maurice Von dog i think a wild dealer from france and walter zininker a wildlife dealer from switzerland and that is all so nice. you said thirty five thousand dollars in 1974 yes that is two hundred and twenty three thousand dollars four hundred eighty six dollars whoa i didn't say that right but you get what i said 200 plus grand for, yeah, 300 yeah, surviving 20, snakes. That's a lot. 23,486. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's a lot of money. A lot it of is. money. A lot of money. The more you know, snakes are not cheap. Well, fun stories. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and for every single case. And so I wonder if it was like all 600 cases of it. So, like, the money times 600. I don't know. Yeah, I want to. Oh, yeah, damn, it's interesting. You're right. Damn. Wow. Anyway, good stories today. Yeah, yeah. very thank good. Thank you guys. Well, thank you, listeners. Thank you for tuning back in. Thank you. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for yeah. Thanks for telling Jay to go more in depth about the witch. Yeah, That's what do fun. I? Yeah, it was oh, very uh, satisfying yeah. to know more information about that case. Drink water. I didn't realize it like. 
so much. So that was cool. Yeah. Drink we'll water. It's hot. Yeah. Yes. Hydrate. And, yes, 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 and yes, yes, rest. Yes. And listen to all the other episodes we have. Oh, I thought you were going to be like, listen to your mom about the witch woman. <laughs> and <laughs> Well, that too. <laughs> and tell us if you have anything from Pigmania through our website. <laughs> yeah, just email us. Be like, this is for Alexis. Yeah, wait a way. Send a picture of it if you have one. Literally only send me emails, you guys. Cause... Yeah, and the, and, the, and the, what is it, subject line? Just say yeah, for just Alexis. Say, yeah, wait a way. Yeah. Yeah. So that she can read them and then, yeah. And then it can make me smile. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, sir. Thank you, folks. Have a good one. Till next time. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Chambers of the Occult. For photos, sources, and anything else mentioned during the episode, check out our website at chambersoftheoccult.com. You'll find everything you need there if you do find yourself wanting more. You can also follow us on all of our socials at Chambers of the Occult and on Twitter at C-O-T-O Podcast. If you have any questions, comments, recommendations, personal anecdotes, or concerns, let us know. Fill out our contact form on our website, email us at chambersoftheoccult at gmail.com, or leave us a message on our socials. We would love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed what you heard, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. It is absolutely the best way to show your support, and it would mean the world. Until next time.